to Histogen to you today. Histogen is a regenerative medicine company that actually focuses on uh, inducing a patient's own endogenous stem cells to proliferate and become new tissues and organs. Okay. Our focus is in tissue regeneration, focusing first on the aesthetic marketplace. My background is in regeneration long before regenerative medicine was even a term. I founded Advanced Tissue Sciences in 1987 and took it public in 88. And throughout the course of the history of the company, we had three cell-based products that were approved by the FDA for burns and chronic ulcers and the like. But there was a reimbursement issue that really set back the entire field in tissue engineering. So in doing it again, I said, lessons learned from advanced tissue. Why don't we look at the byproducts of the cell so many of the issues with transporting a cell-based product are not do not need have to be addressed. And number two, we looking at aesthetic markets, starting with skin care and then hair growth, we don't have the reimbursement hurdle. So our business goal is to be able to go and drive profitability based on the aesthetic products on the market and using those revenues to bring the other therapeutic applications forward. So the multipotent cell condition media I'm going to say a little bit about has a large amount of growth factors and other mor morphogens that have been shown to stimulate stem cells throughout the body. Whether or not they're skin, uh, stem cells in the skin or stem cells in your heart, they stimulate the stem cells to divide and grow into new tissue. The current and near term, of course, is the skin care and cosmetics. The first therapeutic with known reimbursement is the hair growth. I'll share some of that data with you. Longer term, we have wound care studies, device coatings, dermal fillers, as well as longer term oncology studies as well. What really caused us to make the discovery was the work in the mid-90s that showed that fetal healing was very unique. The fetal conditions were such that a, a embryo could have extensive surgery and be born without any scar. And this is because the fetal environment is a hypoxic environment, and the types of collagens and growth factors present there are different than those in your skin after you're born. So we said, what if we grow these newborn skin cells, specifically the fibroblasts, under the fetal conditions of hypoxia and suspension cultures, what would happen? And in fact, what we saw was that over 5,000 genes were differentiated, upregulated under hypoxic conditions. In addition, it was not just the genetic phenomenon, but the proteins that are being secreted and on the cell surface were those that are very similar to the embryonic stem cells. So basically, the Nanog, Ox4, et cetera. So this shows you some of the uh, upregulation of the genes. And we moved on to then developing our manufacturing system to maximize the effects of this hypoxic conditions. We're basically looking at 3% oxygen. So very simply, we take the newborn fibroblasts from a cell bank. We go and feed them onto dextran beads, grow them under hypoxia. Over a 12-week period of time, we collect the media daily, concentrate it, and that's the additive for our skin products and our hair products. Also play a major role in orthopedic products I'm going to touch about and on the oncology products as well. Simultaneously throughout the course of the manufacturing, the cells secrete an insoluble extracellular matrix that's also very embryonic in composition. So basically looking at high quantities of spark, osteonectin, pre-collagen molecules, as well as very high concentrations of glycosamine and glycans. And that's the product that we actually have been using to look at the various tissue fillers. We're developing this as a dermal filler. Uh, a oncology product to be used after tumor revision, and various tissue uh, 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 fillers and, and wound healing products. The product pipeline is what you see right here. The cosmeceutical products are currently on the market in the United States. I'll go into a little bit about that. And we're moving into a pan-Asian agreement in the next couple of weeks. The hair stimulating complex for male pattern baldness have gone through a proof of concept trial, a phase one, two trial, as well as a physician IND. The hair stimulating complex for use in females uh, is gone through a physician uh, IND, and our hope is to file a phase one IND in the United States in the next few months. Oncology is longer term, still in preclinical stages. Wound healing has gone through animal stages, and orthopedics is just starting animal studies right now. We've had four US patents issued, three of them very recently covering the composition of the material that is made under hypoxic conditions, as well as its use in soft tissue repair, including wound healing, its use as a hair stimulating factor, 
and the cell itself, the multipotent stem cell that results from the hypoxic conditions. Our aesthetic partnerships are generating recurrent revenue for us. In March of last year, we signed an agreement with uh, Suniva Medical, based in San Diego, and they launched the three products, looking at Regenica Daytime, Regenica Nighttime, and Regenica Gel. And all of these contain various concentrations of the growth factors. We did clinical trials and published them, even though we're regulated as a cosmeceutical and do not need regulatory approval. But we wanted to have a strong science behind our products themselves. A few months ago, Suniva did a co-promotion with Obagi, which most people know about. Obagi increased the sales force by over 100, so we now have 105 salespeople selling these products to the physician's offices in the United States. The next few days, there's going to be an announcement that they're expanding their territory for these products outside of the United States. You probably know that Obagi was bought by Valiant for $425 million a few months ago, and so they're now strong worldwide. Uh, we are going to be announcing as well a partnership with the principals of Paul Mitchell Salons, and this is going to be called JPGH Joint Venture, based in Korea. And they're going to be selling these, these skin care products under a different name in an expanded product line, Pan-Asia, 17 different countries throughout Asia. Skin care opportunity is huge. Of course, there's no reimbursement there. Baby boomers are aging. Tremendous focus on aesthetic markets. The valuation is high. Skin Medical was bought by Allergan for $350 million a few months ago, their major product being a growth factor containing material. Our product is unique in that we're the only animal-free material on the market, so we contain human growth factors. We don't use any animal serum or animal serum components. In addition, very often people ask the question, if you put growth factors on the skin and there's a precancerous stage, is that going to be a problem? In fact, we have published data along with UCSF showing that our material reverses the skin cancers, actually inducing an apoptosis, and that's a whole separate study that we've done with our oncology group. But again, large established markets, United States, over $3 billion. I'm sorry, there's something wrong with this. Um, Asia's growing and third world countries as well. So we're expecting to go and have our recurrent revenue go well beyond the 1 million stage where it is now, multi-million dollars next year and growing, particularly with the launch in Pan-Asia. In addition to the skin care, we're looking at hair growth. So the hair growth product is regulated as a biologic and is governed by the Drugs uh, Dermatology Division in the United States. We did a proof of concept study starting in November 2008 on 26 patients, and what we found was excellent safety up to a two-year period of time. We also found that after only one set of injections, we had a statistically significant improvement in the amount of terminal to thick hairs at 12 weeks, and this continued to improve over a one-year period of time. So if you look at the conventional products, Propecia or Minoxidil, you have to use them every day, either once or twice a day. They really prevent hair loss more than forming new hair, and once you start, stop using them, within a couple of weeks, your hair falls out again. So here we really had a paradigm shift in thinking about hair growth and really show we were stimulating the stem cells of the hair follicle because after a one-time injection, they not only continue to be a statistically and clinically significant improvement at 12 weeks, but it improved further over a one-year period of time with no subsequent treatments. We then moved into a phase 1-2 clinical trial treating 56 subjects. Primary safety and efficacy was the 12-week time point. We met those very strongly. We increased the number of doses in this second trial and had a second dose as well. And with that, we increased the efficacy. We had a 10.45% increase in the mean total hair at 12 weeks, a 19.5% increase in the terminal hair, and we had an 86% responder rate. So 86% of the men showed more hair at 12 weeks than they did at week zero. We then did a US physician-sponsored IND in both men and women and treating the patients with a total of 120 injections over a six-month period of time. This shows you the, the phase 1-2 trial, the kind of uh, data we had at three months. Of course, this is all computerized, analyzed, so the, the hair is clipped at baseline as well as at each efficacy time point, uh, photographed, and then measured with a computer. So we saw that in patients had hair count increase as high as 61%, terminal hair grade increase as well, um, and so ranging from the, from the 20s up to the 60s as well. So very, very strong efficacy 
And again, at the one-year time point, we continue to have a statistically significant increase in total hair. You could see at the 12-week time point, not only was the terminal hair very significant, but the vellus hair count, which becomes terminal over time, was statistically significant as well. This shows you some of the data that we're very excited because it really shows you how it's going to be used in the clinical setting. I'm going to show you a few of the women. There was a 100% responder rate among the five men and five women treated here. It was a safe passage study, so they received 20 injections at baseline, 20 injections six weeks later, then six weeks another 40, and another 40 for a total of 120. So a 38-year-old woman um, who has had hair shedding dramatically since her mid-20s lost an average of 150 hairs per day. You could see it close up, she's not bald here. She has very, very, very fine vellus hairs. Over an 18-week period of time, these vellus hairs were converted into terminal hairs, so now they have a cosmetic improvement and actually cover the scalp. Her shedding across her entire head went down to less than 50 hairs per day. This study showed us not only was there a local improvement, but it had a positive improvement on decreasing shedding in both men and women across the entire head. So a perimenopausal African-American woman who not only had hair loss down the middle of her head very severely, but had the signs of, of early temporal recession as well. You could see in as little as 12 weeks the new hair formation that she has and a one-year time point, she now has a full head of hair, both temporal recession filled in as well as the midline of the scalp. So clinical update to us is very exciting. We showed a few things. We asked every place on the head, not just mid-scalp and vertex, but temporal recession as well. 